Hi everyone, welcome to the next webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The previous webinars from this training series, as well as the webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are all available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll email your questions to the presenter for his insights. Today's webinar will be presented by Peter Tainton, who has over 20 years of experience in various facets of road design. Peter's been engaged in large projects for several major councils and government road authorities, and has worked closely with our programmers in the implementation of a variety of design features within 12D Model. Today's presentation, Safety Barriers, is episode two in a new series. This webinar will look at W-beam to 3-beam guardrails with transitions and approach and departure treatment, bridge and concrete barriers with approach and departure treatment, wire rope barriers with approach and departure treatment, and construction barriers. The follow-up webinars will each focus on some particular application of BIM objects. We'll keep you posted by email and social media as dates for those are set. Right, well, let's get started. Over to you, Peter. Yeah, thank you very much, Lisa, and welcome everyone to our second webinar on um, uh, TriMesh BIM objects within 12D. Today's session should only take up about 30 minutes of your valuable time. Um, in the previous webinar, we looked at uh, quickly at the TriMesh Create and edit and apply, and we'll just do a short recap. So uh, it's under the BIM TriMesh menu, and I've uh, pinned the menu over here, uh, create TriMesh. So uh, ship with 12D is a variety of shape definitions, and that definition is growing day by day, um, and uh, uh, which can be applied to uh, form TriMesh uh, objects. So again, landscape, construction, fences, retaining walls, bridge profiles, road profiles, service, drainage trenches, lighting, and uh, safety barriers uh, in relation to guardrails and wire rope, etc. Those definitions are stored in a standard library called 12D TriMesh Node Link 4D, and that's to be found in your setups area. The file can be copied from here to your user or working folder and uh, edited and used from those positions. The format is XML. We are going to look at the uh, safety barriers today, uh, as, as I said. Uh, look at guardrails, wire rope barriers, uh, bridge or median barriers, concrete barriers, and the transition uh, features attached to each. The trimesh shapes are applied to strings in relation to vertices and segments. So it is therefore imperative that the strings you use, as I like to say, are good strings. So no null levels, vertices crossing over each other, strings going back on themselves, or closed strings that are not supposed to be closed. We do utilise a regular filter distance during the apply. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and that does take care of most uh, circumstances. Um, but uh, some of those things I mentioned before are quite hard to track down and check for. So uh, always check your data. The barrier types can be made up of more than one profile such as the guardrail, for instance, which can have an approach flare melt uh, type and a departure taper. Um, so if we have a look at our apply panel. Again, it's made up of a, at the top, a perimeter file, and that perimeter file saves all the, all the information that you've filled out here, so you can rerun it again and run it inside a chain. During today's first presentation, I'll be basically just uh, running things, explaining what's happening. And um, I won't be cleaning the model. Uh, and if I make a mistake, I'll just go undo and then uh, fix it up again. So uh, it'll be on the same model as we as we progress. So there's a source bot selection, obviously, to pick the strings you want. Uh, it's found my file in certain areas. We're just working in a working folder. I've um, got all the different types. Um, so we're going to select on um, um, barrier strings today. 
Uh, we're going to be putting on just to a model, a model that's going to be continuously growing. We're not going to clean it. Um, attributes can be set to the TriMesh as it gets created, um, and uh, that's under our new utilities attributes, global attributes, uh, and you can set and create your own attributes there. So in that case, there I can pick on here, select a user-definable attribute types. Uh, for uh, the different uh, fencing and barriers, uh, again, user definable, and um, basically uh, continue from there. So we're not going to do too much that today, but that's all available uh, in relation to attribute information and also uh, uh, BIM directories out to IFC. Um, most of the times, you can actually, you can if you have an attribute uh, listing or path on your original data. Uh, you can copy those attributes to your TriMesh by simply just putting in the, the, the top level path name. Um, the, the, there's a tin available, so we're going to use a tin surface here. Um, not on every single um, uh, TriMesh that you create, but most times you want to be able to, especially for barriers and safety barriers, you want to be able to, to um, uh, position the posts in relation to a tin surface uh, and also any transitions or uh, uh, beams that are actually longitudinal, we want to be uh, parallel to the tin surface. So hence, we, uh, uh, it recognises the, the tin. Um, as we do our job, we'll make them all roughly, say, uh, 2.5 metres. Um, and again, um, um, I'm just going to run this each time, but we will kind of look at a, a parameter file, one that I've uh, saved before uh, later on. So the regular distance interval, as I said, allows you to uh, allows us to sample the string that you that you uh, provide, uh, regardless of how many closed boosts that, that string may have. So inside your MTF file, you may have designed your job like this. So traditionally, there's lots of points on that string uh, that don't necessarily line up with your particular uh, post position. Um, so that's what the regular interval does for you. Um, so again, the the, the, the strings uh, are created, any any flare or transitions. So these strings here, uh, the yellow one and the magenta one, uh, would have been created in my apply many under a, under a particular layer, and then set onto a model um, that you can then apply these objects to. So they're all out of an MTF file. You can just draw a string, of course. Um, so looking at my design. The strings themselves, as I said, they're all vertex and segment orientated, so it does make a bit of a difference on what you draw. Um, so these two strings here are uh, a typical uh, guardrail approach to maybe a two-lane road. Um, so this is you, you draw the actual length of the main part of the guardrail. You don't. It's not necessary to draw the flares or or any sort of a taper at the end. Um, uh, the, the these objects are taken care of with the um, uh, uh, BIM object. Um, it is important to know that there's no left or right involved in these definitions. Um, so the this string here represents the face of the of the guardrail. So all the posts and everything are on the left hand side. So this string goes this way, and this other string goes that way. So you don't have to worry about left and right. Just make sure that uh, these strings are traditionally you know, uniquely named, and they go in the direction that you want the, the guardrail to go. Um, so this type of string here is um, drawn up to utilise the transition between a, a W-beam and a Thry-beam. So the magenta one on either end are W-beams, and this one here is a Thry-beam. So the, the transition between the two is a connection uh, attached to this particular string. So hence, they, they attach to the end of these strings. Uh, so you have to allow a distance between the two strings to take into account the transition, which is two metres. Uh, have some strings that do uh, wire barriers, and also a, a changeover from the uh, wire type barrier with a, a terminal end uh, to a, a guardrail. So as I said before, uh, designed in our MTF file. If we have a look at our bridge at the top, this is where we're going back to a, a, a concrete barrier, um, which would be a, a protection for the bridge and, on, and uh, other traffic. And uh, so attached to that is a, a, a transition um, going from a W beam to a thry beam connector at the bridge, um, so that's uh, 6.94 metres long. So it's attached to the end of this string. Um, so that's the idea. And at the end of the string here, we have a off ramp. And again, the, the, there's strings drawn to represent the guardrail. Um, that string goes that way. That one goes this. And it's a small string here that will uh, we will define the cushion barrier 
uh, as we approach these two guardrails. All right, so again, we go back to our, our, our job. We're just going to um, select our strings. So again, I've drawn those little strings, different color ones to represent uh, the ones we're going to work on. So we, if we turn around, so we're going to use our guardrail and we pick our, our choice and uh, process. So basically it's going to create the guardrail for me. Now it's only over the length of the guardrail. There's no flares or anything attached or no melt treatments at all. Um, so just showing you that uh, that's the string I've drawn. So I didn't really want to, I want to add these other things on. And those, those flare approach do have their own post uh, where they connect. So you don't need to have the post at the start and the end of the main area where the string is. So if I undo that, and I go back in here and I say, I only want the post every intermediate. And I also then want a uh, melt with flare approach at the start of the string. And I want just a normal turnout departure at the end of the string. And I want a W beam. So then I turn around and create that for me. Again, so if I look back in my job, and I look back where my original strings were drawn, uh, you can see the tri-mesh over the top. So the green string is where the full guardrail is. And then these, these end treatments add on the actual um, uh, flare and melt arrangement. The tin surface uh, positions all these posts at the appropriate level and also uh, orientates in, uh, in the vertical, this particular uh, beam and this end treatment are parallel to the road surface. Because these strings are drawn, this, this connection is also the same for this road, for this side. So that string goes that way and this one goes that way. So what we need to do is to pick the other string and again process, fill in, create that guardrail on that side. Um, so the direction of the string is, 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 is quite important. So if we undo that, so throughout some of the barrier types, uh, we do have a LOD or a level of detail 100 for some of the, um, the, the main barriers. So if I then turn around and get a W beam flare approach and a W beam departure, and I pick up a LOD and process that, it'll then create a shape that we don't need the little posts, even though it might be handy to see them. And again, we process that. So it'll, it'll create the shape for you. So it'll be a, a shape you can, if you, if you don't want the heavy detail, you can um, uh, then do your um, uh, clash detection against the solid shape and also any sight distance that you may want to do as well. So we then go to our transition area. So again, these strings are just drawn just to show you what's going on. Um, so again, if I pick my um, guardrail here and I want a, a footing, I want just a simple flare approach. I don't need anything at the end and I want a W beam panel. It'll turn around and um, I suppose this one should have been at the start. Right, so um, uh, as you see where there's transitions between the two, it, it, there's no post because we're going to do that with the actual transition one. So again, I picked the other barrier at the other end and we want a departure there instead of an approach and we go process. Right, so if we look at the um, the transition now, so this string here is the one that does the, the thry beam and it has the connections at either end. So hopefully they will line up with the barrier that you've drawn on both sides. So if I pick the thry beam one, so now I want to be able to say I want a thry beam post and footing, intermediate, and I also want a transition. So I want to, want to go from the W beam to the thry beam and it's also an, an approach transition. That's at the start. And the other end, I want to be able to go from back from the thry beam to the W beam, and it's a transition and it's a the departure. In the middle, I want a thry beam. So I got a process, and it'll then create that for you. So the idea is you set up these strings here, um, uh, you know, defining where this is happening, and uh, take into account that you do have a transition of two meters there. So I then have a look at the, the, the other types of barriers. So if we go back to our transition. So again, this, this library uh, will, will grow as, uh, as time goes on. Um, so if I go and grab the safety barrier, the ET2000. So I want an intermediate post because I want to do a, a transition at the end. And I want a, uh, we're just looking at the departure part here. 
Uh, so the same thing would happen at the other end. So I want a departure at the end and I want a W bean. So I process that, it'll, it'll then create that. So, the, so this, this uh, uh, end treatment or transition or barrier is completely from this end of the string all the way along. So you don't have to draw all that. Uh, it will, these are stored as 12DA files and part of this definition. And uh, it's then applied to the end of the string and orientated in relation to the, the string and also the tin surface. So if we undo that. So I can also then look at a other one which has the, the arrow at the end of it. So I process that and it has this sort of arrow arrangement. Uh, and again, if you undo, I'm not doing anything at, at this end here, we're just concentrating on this part. So if I go and grab the um, the yellow nose type one, uh, you're all used to seeing these types, departure, and again, that W beam and process. So it creates that barrier. So again, the string's drawn, you never have to worry about the actual extension, um, which can be up to, you know, sometimes eight, uh, you know, 12 meters long, uh, it's all created by that shape for you. So if I go on and look at our our wire barriers. So different types of wire barriers. So again, we've got two different types. Um, and again, if I look at the safety barrier, I look at the flexi fence. Um, so I'm looking at a, a terminal approach and terminal departure. So I want a terminal approach. And I want a terminal departure, and I want a wire rope for the entire process. So the 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 uh, concrete block um, tie-in is is set. The diminishing posts, and again, utilising this tin surface, they're all uh, orientated to the tin and uh, positioned uh, below the tin surface for you. Um, so if I now pick the other side of the road, the other type barrier, uh, the flexi fence. I can grab the sentry line one and again pick up a type three approach and a type three departure and a wire rope. It does the same thing there, just a different, slightly different types. Uh, one has more diminished posts and so forth, one slightly higher than the other. Um, so if I then go into my uh, barrier change. This is where we've designed our road. We've designed our, our swap over between the, the, the wire barrier and a normal guardrail. Uh, so in that case, I would then have the one for the guardrail. And uh, again, you know, going in, picking the the, the type I want. Uh, as you see, if you're using end treatments, most times the intermediate is, is, is for the post because you don't want the extra post. Um, so I just turn around and say I have a normal approach and I want a W beam. I process that. So then um, uh, I'll, I'll do that for you. So again, the string here goes the other way. It goes this way. So I want a approach departure, not at the end. And I can go process again. So it, it, this is quite easy when it's, when you've got the string set up the way you want. And, and, and that's the main um, uh, criteria is make sure the strings you're selecting uh, are, uh, are, as I said before, uh, good strings. Um, so we go to our our bridge. So here's a here's a a, a medium barrier. It's going to be a, a protection for the for the bridge abutments. The one I just did before has I didn't worry about the end because that's going to join on to my bridge. Um, so if I my uh, my median, if I grab that structure, and I'm going to grab safety barriers. So I want the thrive W thrive beam bridge barrier. Um, so I want here, I want to do a, a W to thrive beam uh, a bridge terminal approach. That's at the start. And I want to do a W to bridge uh, departure. And for the rest of the string, I want that to be a concrete barrier. The process and it creates that. So obviously knowing that the distance between there and there is, um, is uh, 6.94 meters, these two strings are positioned in relation to that. So when we add on the transition from a, uh, a W beam to a thrive beam connector, it lines up with the barrier on the other side. It is a slight gap, but I don't think too many people worry. Uh, this string goes the other way. Uh, so again, process that, and it will then line up with the, with the uh, other barrier. So I have um, um, duplicated some of these um, options. So this particular profile, this particular shape, 
type definition. Um, I've also allowed you to not only do the bridge, but also then to throw a bit of a, 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 a W beam with some posts rather than having to go to the other definition all the time. Um, so I can go to post and footing, change this to a W beam, pick this string here, and again, process that. So just a little as you have to go to the other one, but it's just no big deal. So I go to my ramp exit. So again, these strings are drawn. The, the drawing the strings is is, is paramount. Um, so this string hasn't got a, a taper end on it. It's just the post is bent in to abut up to a, a cushion barrier. So this string goes that way, the barrier's on this side. This string goes that way, the barrier's on that side. So if I go and select that string, and oops, so I just undo that. I meant to have a, a post on all points. I got processed, and I pick the other one. Again, process. So now I wish to do the 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 uh, barrier. Um, so again, we'll be doing another uh, final webinar on customization on how to create these things, and um, so we should be able to to uh, create a lot more and you can do some user-defined ones. So I'm looking at supports. I want a terminal at the start and I want a, the, the quad barrier uh, all the way along. I go process. It then creates my barrier. So again, inside there is um, uh, the, the, the concrete footing and also that, that, that type of uh, cushion type barrier. Again, if I go back to my uh, start, and I do get rid of the demo model for the time being. Um, so when I originally did these strings at the start, obviously you would not just do what I did, just uh, uh, putting it on the same model and just going undo every time. Um, so obviously it can be saved as a parameter file. So I then read that in. So these strings have got a nice unique name, go row one, go row two, all the information I did before, I can go process. And then creates the, the particular shape for me as part of this parameter. So you can, you know, select all those and run them for you. Um, so when you're running these these type of ones, um, uh, you can run inside a chain. Um, so if I finish that off and run the chain, I just recorded this as a as an option manual. So if I run the chain, it'll then turn around, run that for me, clean out all the model and then finish the panel off. Um, this is only a very short thing, that, that took a couple of seconds. Um, so you imagine it is doing quite a bit of detailed work. Um, so if you do apply your uh, the guardrail parameter to uh, um, 20 kilometres of uh, road, I can't guarantee it's going to be as fast as two seconds. So I look at my um, my bridge. And I'll add back on my demo. So we also have um, uh, some uh, construction or temporary type fences. Um, so again, if we look at our apply, and we're just going to rerun this every now and then. So I'm looking at my um, uh, construction barriers. These are uh, uh, temporary type ones, uh, construct. So I want to again pick up my tin surface. Uh, this particular type zone guard fence is four meter spacing, comes in little, uh, little um, uh, blocks. And I want to be able to grab a anti-cork and I can go process this. So let me create that that particular thing and apply it every four meters and, and we'll work all this out for you. Um, so again, these are all just profiles uh, as I discussed in the previous webinar at Nort Nort and uh, then saved off in the definition file. So we, we'll have a look at a customization in a, in a uh, month's time or so and, um, uh, and on how you go about creating those. So if I go and select the other side, uh, the types you want under construction, we have a concrete barrier might be every two meters. Every time you pick one of these, you have to, it clears this area out. So you do have to go and select something and go process again to get that to happen. Um, these are all just sitting on top of the thing. There's no post type involved. Um, so if I undo that, and then I go and grab uh, another construction one. So we go to the water fill one. Those types of barriers. And again, last of all, We'll grab the plastic type ones. So again, the the, the, the we're towards the end of a half hour. Um, so basically, uh, utilising the ones that are there, uh, taking care in in how you create your strings in relation to 
um, the, uh, how you're going to apply the barriers and you can see that you do get those all those things working for you um, and uh, you know, utilizing your MTF strings and uh, in the final process being able to get um, a very good detail of, of your uh, barriers um, and also utilizing them at certain stages for site distance calculation, class detection and attaching attribute information to output to uh, IFC. Um, so um, at, uh, the idea of these webinars is to is to give you a bit of an insight into it, uh, not to go uh, take too long in creating them, but it's it's a, if you use the ones in the library, it is a matter of just saying what sort of vertex type do I want, what sort of transition and post do I want, and the segment type is the is the uh, the actual longitudinal type, um, you know your your W beams, your uh, concrete barriers, and so forth. Um, so um, uh, I hope that gives you a good insight, and uh, I'd like to. Uh, end it there and we'll uh, back to you Lisa. Thanks for that Peter. The recording of today's webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Keep an eye on our emails and social media for details of our future webinars. And in other news, as you may know, the 12D Synergy team is hosting a roadshow across Australia from the 11th of November. It's all about how you can take your business mobile with 12D Synergy versions 4.3 and 5. See 12D Synergy's new features in action, including a new offline data mode, CAD, plotting, cloud, web, and 12D Synergy mobile. You can also meet the 12D Synergy team and network with other 12D users. The roadshow is traveling to Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth. Registrations are open and the event is completely free, but spaces are limited, so make sure you grab your ticket right away. We've got a link to that on the homepage of 12D.com for your easy access. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you all for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.